Hey guys, the project I have for you today is a really important one, at least for me. We see these popping up more and more and it's really nice to see. And that is a flagpole. Now, if you know any, if you follow me on social media, you know that for years, this was the, the flagpole that I had at my house. It's just an old paint pole, extension pole. It was just something I threw together and it worked great for a while, but we get a lot of high wind up here and this thing bent. So today, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make this one. It's a real simple project. I did it with stuff that I just had laying around. So that makes it a really economical project as well. Really, the only thing I had to buy was some concrete for the base and the hardware to hang the flag. So stick around and I'll show you how I did it. So this project was just made with stuff basically I had laying around. This was a piece of top rail from chain link fence, a galvanized pipe. It's I don't know the dimensions. I'm going to say an inch and a half just based on the other things that I used. I just hooked it up between two saw horses so I could work on it. So first I sanded it and then I'm just wiping it down with some paint thinner just to get all the dust and dirt off and get it ready for paint. So obviously the easiest way to paint this would have been with spray paint, but I had this Rust-Oleum paint laying around. So that's what I used. I wasn't going out and buying a bunch of special things for this project. I wanted it to be a quote unquote free project, just using the things that I already had on hand. But I did have to buy some specialty hardware for the flag itself. So while the paint's drying, I decided, uh, let me drill out the stump because I had the old flag in the stump and I figured I would just use this new flag in the stump too, but it didn't work out that well. I went through all this trouble and as it turned out, the stump was rotted out and it just basically came right out of the ground. So now I'm assembling the pieces that are going to be the sleeves where the flag itself is going to sit on. There's going to be rings holding the flag and those rings are going to go on these sleeves that allows the flag to spin around. So it doesn't get twisted up on the pole in the wind, which I'm sure is everybody's pet peeve with a flagpole. So what these are, they are pieces of inch and a half PVC. And then the longer section is inch and a quarter tailpiece that you would put on the bottom of your bathroom sink. I got a small section, and a long section, and I just glued them together. And that's going to be where the ring spins around. It's going to set on that shoulder of the rigid PVC and spin around on the tailpiece section. It, this all makes sense when you see the, the, it come to, the project come together. So then I'm just painting it up with the same paint that I painted the pole with. And also you noticed before that I drilled a hole in it. And what that's gonna allow me to do is attach this piece to the pole itself. I like this project because I, it's just something I did with scraps that I had laying around. I said previously, I didn't really want to buy anything. I did have to buy the hardware, but that was it really. The biggest part of this project that was a pain was the fact that I did it on the fly without really any setup. You see here, I'm working on a piece of plywood that's sitting on a trash can and the trash can is on wheels, which makes sawing and sanding kind of a pain in the butt. However, I wasn't like I said, it was a project on the fly. I didn't want to have to go through the trouble of setting things up. I wouldn't say it was dangerous. I didn't really do anything that was dangerous. Was it the safest way to do some of the things I did? No. So if you want to comment that I, how I did things was, was say unsafe or dangerous or I risked hurting myself, yes, I already know that, but thank you for your concern. But this piece, now this is what's going to be the rings where the flag is going to attach to and then slip over those two, for lack of a better term, bracket. This is just a coupling, like a PVC coupling 
with some pipe in it because I needed the thickness. So I made that and then I just cut it in half. And now I'm just deburring it a little bit. And then I'll sand it a little bit. This one I did not paint. Why? I don't know. You could paint it if you wanted it to, if you wanted to, but I just chose not to. So, like I said, I'm deburring it and then I'm sanding it a little bit because I want it to be as smooth as I can because I don't want any friction. And actually, I never show this anywhere, but I actually think I did even spray it a little bit with some silicone just to get it some lubricant. And now I'm attaching the eyelet to it, which starts out with drilling a hole very carefully because I'm holding it with my fingers and I have previously in my life drilled a hole through my finger. So both they get a, this is just a starter hole so I can screw the eyelet in there, which is going to hold the carabiner, which is going to hook onto the flag. And then that whole apparatus is going to slip onto the two mounts to hold the whole works together. It'll make a lot of sense. It'll actually make more sense once you see it all go together. So after I pre-threaded the eyelet into the ring, what I had to do, I marked it and I actually had to cut off a piece of the thread so it's just in the ring itself and it doesn't protrude through the inside because obviously that would prevent it from spinning. So I just mix up some epoxy and I'm going to glue the two eyelets into the PVC so they stay there and they don't spin out because we get a lot of big wind up our way and I didn't want to risk. Seriously, I, I think it could untwist these eyelets because if they were just threaded in there. So once I thread them in, it's important the alignment of the eyelets because you have a, a circle for the eyelet and then you have your carabiner and then you want that to line up so that is perpendicular to the flag. So the eyelet has to be perpendicular to this ring so then the carabiner will be parallel to the ring which will make the flag perpendicular to the carabiner making it fly straight up and down again very confusing but it will all make sense once you see it go together so i got the first one done and then you can see down the bottom right hand corner of the screen there i just set it into the mount so the epoxy will set up and not run all over the place if it runs into the threaded part of the eyelet a little bit that's no big deal these fit in there pretty good so that's why i had to use a, I don't even know what that is, a screwdriver, an extension rod or extension piece from a drill bit or something to help me screw it in there. And then I just let them dry. So while they're drying, here's where I put my mount on the pole. I just went through the hole I previously drilled and then I started a hole in the galvanized pipe. Again, is this the safest way to do it, holding the pipe like this? Probably not, but I wasn't worried about it going through the pole into my hand because it has to go through a whole nother layer of the, of the pipe. And again, as difficult as it was going through the front side, I really doubted it was going to pop through and go through my hand. But yes, I probably should have done that a lot safer, clamped it to the bench or put it in a vise or done something so my hand was out of the way there. But thank you all for your concern. Now I just had to measure where the bottom hole was. And all you have to do really is whatever size flag you're using. Most flags are three by five. So figure out where your connections are gonna be and that's where you drill for your second mounting bracket. So after I secured the bracket to the pipe, and I did that with just a self-tapping screw, you can see how you slide the ring onto the bracket, and that's what's going to spin and allow the flag to fly freely without twisting up. So here's where my first point where I ran into a little problem of not planning out too well. On the top of the flag, I wanted to put a light, like a solar light that would be lit all the time but I didn't account for the battery pack and the battery pack 
ran into the screw that's holding the bracket to the pole. Now, I eventually just moved the, the bracket down a little bit so the battery pack from the light would clear. But if you had a smaller screw, really you just need to go into the pipe. I mean, the battery pack didn't, wasn't the, the total width of the pipe. So if you had a smaller screw, I didn't. So it was easier for me just to move the bracket down a little bit. And now I'm just taking that solar light and gluing it into the top of the pole. You can use anything you want, silicone, caulk, construction adhesive. I'm actually, I think that's actually some more flexi seal. I have a lot of flexi seal around. I use it all the time. And it's worked out great. I just cleaned it up. And then I think I, I did tape it, got some painter's tape and just held it in place till the next morning for that to dry. And it held in place just fine. So while that was all drying and I realized the stump was not going to work, I ended up digging out and pouring a concrete post that the flag will sit in. So after I just leveled up or plumbed up this concrete tube, I think I have it sticking out about two feet or so out of the ground and about two or three feet in the ground. Plumbed it up and then I just filled it with concrete. And then I slipped another piece of that plumbing tailpipe down in the concrete as a sleeve that's going to slide around and allow me to just slip that pole in. So here I'm just hooking the carabiners to the rings and I'm getting ready to hook the flag up. As you can see it all go together, all the other explaining that I was trying to do earlier, I hope it kind of makes sense now. This worked out really a lot better than I expected it to, especially since it was kind of a thrown together project. And I'm just hooking on the flag. You can see how the orientation works where the, the ring is perpendicular to the carabiner, which is perpendicular to the flag. So that's it for this project. I think it turned out really good. The only other things that I did do, I installed some lights. I have some solar lights on here that shine up on the flag. And that's really important, guys. If you're gonna have a flag like this one is, that's out all the time, even in darkness, etiquette states that you have a dedicated light that illuminates the flag. Um, I'll leave you a link below for where you can find out about flag etiquette, when to fly it, how to fly it, what to do, because that's really important. If you're gonna fly the flag, you have to do it in the proper way. But the only other thing I have to do for this project is figure out what I wanna do with the base. It's just the blank concrete now. What, actually, it's not the blank concrete. Let me, what I did do is the mix that I used when I parged the side of the house, I just mixed up a little bit of that and I put it around the outside of the, of the pillar just to fill it in and finish it somewhat. I'm not sure if I just like that look. I don't know if I'm gonna put some concrete stain on it, maybe paint it, uh, different kind of treatments. I'm thinking about putting stone around the outside or maybe some tile or even some rope. I think that would look cool too. I did do, however, was I put this uh, stone on here I just cut a couple circles out of some old pavers that I had and put that on top just to kind of finish it as a cap. But I'm not 100% sure if I like it. I, I don't know about the proportions. You can let me know what you think and we'll see how it goes. So I hope you enjoyed the project. It's, it was really easy with just things I had laying around, like I said, except for the hardware. If you want to build a flagpole, this is a great way to do it. It's sturdy, it's simple. It's not going anywhere, and if you have high winds like we do, this is going to be the way to go. If this is your first time here, there's a lot of projects just like this on the Homecraft Chronicles. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, that way when anything new comes along, 
You can watch it, check it out, see what you think, and let me know what you think about it. So until I see you next time, remember, take care of yourself and your home. I'll talk to you soon.